Good morning, my dear audience. How are you? Louder. Good. It's great to have you all here. I'm really, I can see this colorful friends, um, colleagues, role models, um, people I always wanted to know. Please contact me, I'm, I want to speak to you. Um, welcome. DLD, who knows what DLD stands for? Not everyone. DLD stands for Digital Life Design. And DLD is, since eight years, we explore the huge change due to data analytics and our usage about it. What is the impact of this digitalization? What is the impact on its impact on economic growth, social well-being, well-being of our societies, the governance of our governments? What is it changing? We are in the midst of a huge paradigm shift. Today, we look at this paradigm shift, at this enormous change we are all in the midst of from a female perspective. DLD women. What are the new leadership models? What are the new business models? How is technology um, synergizing the body, mind, and spirit um, duality? Um, what is trigger, what, how is tr technology triggering our, our creativity, our commitment, our confidence, our confidence, and our solidarity? We have a lot of things to talk about. We have great people here speaking. We have a super, super audience, you all. Um, I encourage you to ask a lot of questions. And Speak to your neighbors, learn a lot. After this conference, you, I hope you, you have new ideas and new opportunities. And maybe the conversation goes on after the conference. If it's too packed, if it's too much for you, because it will be very packed, there's the English garden. It's one of the beauty, most beautiful gardens in Europe. Check it out. <laughs> um, before we kick off, I have to do three thank yous. First of all, I want to thank our chairman, the, our DLD chairman, Hubert Berda and Yossi Vardi. Is Yossi here? Not yet. They have supported us for many years. And I want to thank you to Mr. Kallen. He's probably the most unknown CEO in Germany. And yet, he is our CEO, the CEO of Hubert Berda Media. And he's really, he's the one who, who drives us all, who gives us a lot of spirit. And he's changing our traditional media company into a company of the 21st century. And really, I learned in these two years he is with us as CEO, I learned so much. He is such an inspiring person. He is a true leader, and despite he's a man, I'm very happy to work for him. <laughs> and now I tell you a little secret. You know, this kind of conference is always an enormous adventure for me, for our team, even for you, you don't know what's, what you are listening to. And what are you do when you do an adventure, when you are about to be in the midst of an adventure? You know, you, I'm sure you know it, but I tell you also, you bring your friends. You bring the one who you trust, who, who you admire, from whom you know that they are here in tough times, that they are here in good times, that they challenge you, that, they, that you love them, and they help you. The success of this conference is very much owed to Maria Furtwängler. I'm proud for her friendship, for her chairmanship, for her smartness, for her beauty. Please come on stage. DLD chairwoman. Chairwoman. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Steffi. Oh, you're leaving me? Oh, really? Thank you so much. Steffi is the wonderful heart and soul and brain of DLD, and thank you so much for your warm-hearted words. Wow, it's good to be here. It's f actually, it's fantastic to make a conference. You have the opportunity to bring up the themes you think are the most important, and you have the opportunity to invite the people you're most interested in. I mean, I feel honored and privileged to be here. And of course, for you, it's a great opportunity for network. And with the good tradition of our chairman of, chairman of DLD, uh, network starts with contact, with real contact, eye contact, hand contact, please. Say hello, shake hands to the person right and left to you. Say hello to them, it's the first contact. <laughs> and in the back... <laughs> oh, I love that moment. <laughs> I love that moment. You must go, echt, jetzt ist Schluss. Weg, you must echt weg. This is my favorite moment. It makes me feel like I'm in a, a poulailler, wie sagt man, in einem Hühnerstall. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's what DLD Women should be all about, about networking, getting to know each other, getting in touch with each, with each other. And uh, Steffi already did mention, uh, with this wonderful theme Steffi came up to, new rules, new values. She already mentioned that. We're facing tremendous change through digitalization, mostly in the way we work, the way we learn, looking at my daughter, the way we connect, obviously, and of course, the way we do business. And it's for sure that we will need, or we do need, new rules and new values for that. Nowadays, through um, uh, the digital connected world, everybody, everybody, wherever he is, is able to interfere, to interact. And of course, social media plays a very big role in that. I have a little story, a little experience about new values uh, in my own little Facebook fan page. One day I posted a, a picture, I thought it was a pretty picture of me, and a, and a nice little rabbit fur coat. And I thought, okay, rabbit is fine, because we, we eat rabbit, don't we? And I posted it and saying, and don't worry, it's a rabbit fur. You cannot imagine the whole of upsetness and of what I got back was terrible. And all and many of them posted some links, you know, to PETA or to other sites, explaining what happens with these animals. And very frankly, by going on those links, clicking them, I have definitely reconsidered my approach to even how you say captive animal breed and to leather. And what happened to me in a very small scale is what big companies are facing on a very big scale every day. I don't know, for instance, if um, some of you know the Dove campaign, you know Dove, the, this you know, beauty product, this natural beauty product thing. They had a fabulous campaign about how many, uh, you know, how little girls today are exposed to a tremendous amount of uh, uh, you know, super sexy, super perfect bodies and how this impairs their own relationship to their body. That was an excellent campaign, but Greenpeace took the same look and feel, the same music and everything, and made a clip, posted it on YouTube, uh, where it showed how much Dove's use of palm oil contributed to the destruction of the rainforest in Indonesia. This spot was clicked like more than a million times in two or three weeks. And Doves had, had to change very quickly his supply chain, how you say, supply chain, or way it supplies it palm oil. So the impact of such a thing on, on companies is tremendous. I don't know, for instance, Nestle has the same issue right now with child labor and some cocoa, cocoa plantations. So the ability of, of companies, and you will all, we have many company leaders here, uh, I'm sure they're going to talk about it, uh, to lie or this has changed. Companies have much more than ever to be transparent and sincere. And I think this is a tremendous paradigm shift. Um, and my deeper belief is that what a company stands for is not only important to the outside, but more and more important to the inside. Uh, 
the set of values is crucial for attracting and retaining the best people. I mean, look at, for instance, Hewlett Packard. I think we're having, for instance, Frau Zedelmeier here. Maybe 10 years ago, they might have sent, I don't know, a set of computers to a village in somewhere developing countries or money. Nowadays, the company like this would do their own project, send not only the computer, but send their staff there to teach the people and to really have a sustainable impact. And it's for sure that those employees have a different relationship to their employer than, than others. Um, and where am I now? I have to change the page. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> this is a disadvantage of a hand microphone. Frau Ministerin, Sie haben ganz recht mit dem Headset. Oh, it's lovely to speak in German. Um, but of course, oh yeah, th this is a little criticism, not for you, Tubert. I already saw my husband like, <gasps> criticism? She meant me? Not of course not. Um, no, I, I was wondering because of course we have to walk the talk. I mean, for instance, Google has a fabulous motto. Google's motto is, don't do evil. But actually at some point we can wonder what are they doing with this incredible obsession and in collecting data I mean, you know, let's go to Facebook, Google, wherever we go there, we have the feeling it's oh, it's fantastic, it's all for free. But at the end of the day, we're paying with the most private, the most intimate good we have, which is our personal data. And I wonder, you know, where this is going to lead one day. Anyway, my impression, uh, just a little criticism. Uh, my impression is uh, that we are, as a society, I don't know how you think about it, but as a society, my feeling is that we're moving away from an I, I, I thing to a more we, and we together. And uh, of course, I mean, look at social media. It's based on connectedness, the willing to share something, and communication, and going together, and communities. So, uh, and my feeling is that we don't become less of an individual through this, because this is sometimes a feeling, right? That people say, oh, where is the, the individual, in it, individual in it? My feeling is that uh, we become more of an individual in the sense that wherever we are, in the most remote place in Finland, in the woods, we will find, we're able to find in that people that think alike and that feel alike. And my conviction is that this strengthens the individual. This makes them more, you know, many individuals gather together, they become a we, and they will be more powerful more courageous and I believe, deeply believe in empowerment through connectedness and no need to say how important this is for women throughout the world. I mean, just think of the rising against the uh, oppressive regimes in the Middle East. So I think this is a really a strong indicator to be optimistic about this, again, a change of values and rules. Um, there's one skill that to me is more or getting more and more important anyway. It's a tremendously important skill, but especially in the net, because if we're not able to read, emotionally read what the other says, our conversation will, a virtual conversation, a real conversation too, will quickly come to an end. It's all about empathy, and I'm very happy that we're going to have an expert talking about empathy, talking about are we able to learn empathy, um, and being a, an educator, by education, by training, being a physician, I love any kind of uh, scientific approach. Steffi, where are you? This is not what you are. This is why we're so good together. I love scientific approach and I'm very proud, Steffi, that we could gather some wonderful scientists to talk about their latest finding. And my impression is, I mean, you'll tell me at the end of the conference, but my impression is that when we're listening to them, our comfortably, how you say, traditional, comfortable idea of body-mind separation will have to reconsider this because what they're bringing up is really quite amazing and troubling. I mean, at the end of the day, are we completely controlled by our hormones? Is there anything like a free will anyway? And then there's one more aspect I'd like to uh, point to because sustainability is in everybody's mind and mouth. Is this an expression in English? Is in everybody's mouth? Probably not. In German you say it, it's an aller Munde. Sustainability, in my opinion, is not only um, something that companies more and more have to look economically, ecologically, but sustainability is going to be an aspect we'll have more and more to think about when we think of our body. 
the way we interact with our body. Um, the, the society is growing older and older. We, diseases like dementia, cancer, and so on and so forth are going higher and higher, more prob the probability rises, so we, we will have to think about ourselves differently. Wow, so I am very optimistic about the future. I'm very curious about the future. I'm very curious about this conference, and I do hope we're going to be able to push some more doors open. I'm so happy that I live, that you girls, my daughter, your daughters, we live in a time where so many doors are open for us women, but there's still some doors that we need to open. And I am so happy that this year I have the best support one can imagine. I have four fabulous co-chair women. Um, I have, we have Pat Mitchell, see, first woman to be CEO and president of PBS and now CEO and president of the Paley Media Center. We have Vivian Redding, the wonderful vice president of the European Commission, who is always, I mean, a fighter for the quota, for a bigger amount of women in top positions. Um, we have the wonderful, one of the most inventive journalists, Ariana Huffington, who reinvented a journal online with her Huffington Post. And last but not least, we're having a wonder, wonderful uh, Minister for Labour, Frau Dr. Ursula von der Leyen, who herself has been, a, how you say, a restless fighter for women's issues uh, ever since she was in politics or mother. I don't know, you're going to tell us, Ursula. So I'm very, very proud to have you all here and I'm very thankful to this wonderful co-chair woman to support us, to push, to, how you say, close the gender gap further, if this is an English expression. Thank you very, very much for your patience and for your attention. I wish you all a wonderful conference. Thank you very much.